Let's close our eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the privilege we have once again as leaders and workers in the church to be exposed to your word. We are praying, O oh Lord, that your spirit will speak to every heart tonight in Jesus' name. Whatever you are telling us, we know that in ourselves we do not have the power, the strength, the ability to obey. But strength comes from you. Grace comes from you. Give us the grace and the strength to be obedient to your word in Jesus' name. Help us to see the reward ahead of us so that that reward will be motivating us and encouraging us to move on and to do your work in Jesus' name. And we pray that none of us will miss our reward on earth and in heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're being in the book of Jonah. And we still want to continue today. I'm now in Jonah chapter 3. We're looking at verses 1 and 2. Jonah chapter 3 from verse 1 and verse 2. And the word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. You want to notice those words there in verse 1 the second time second chance here in this world we often have second chance you think about moses he lost the chance 
because he went ahead of God. But thank God, the second chance came. You think about a person like Peter. He backslid and forsook the commission, went back to the nets again. But thank God, the second chance came. As it happened to Moses and happened to Peter, and happened to quite a number of people in the Bible and in contemporary times, the God of mercy and the God of love gave Jonah a second chance. The topic tonight is recommissioning of a repentant preacher. The recommissioning of a repentant preacher. You'll see what the Lord had said unto him. The word of the Lord came unto him again. Revelation came. And the revelation wasn't quite different from what the Lord had told him before arise and go unto Nineveh and preach unto that city. The preaching that I bid thee. The question is, what brought Jonah from rebellion to recommissioning? So that we'll know how to retrace our own steps. So that we too will know if we have rebelled, gone away from the commission the Lord has given us. And if we're looking for the second chance, how that recommissioning will come. You understand? The divine discipline and the severe chastisement of affliction, of isolation, of suffering brought him to the point he was able to realize. And he said, they that forsake the mercy of the Lord, they are following after vanities. So they that follow after vanities, they that observe blind vanities, will forsake their own mercy. And there are five things you can notice in Jonah coming from rebellion to recommissioning. Number one, there was a realization. He came to himself like the prodigal son. Realization. Number two, remorse and regret. As he was in the belly of the whale, how much he must have regretted. How much he must have said, I shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have run away from the Lord. And from the commission of the Lord, he came to himself. And there was remorse and regret. Had I known, I would have obeyed. Number three, repentance. There was a turning point in his life. He turned away from his rebellion. And he turned away from sin. Number four, a restoration to come back to grace. Forgiveness was given unto him, and with the forgiveness, there was now renewed fellowship with the Lord. With that fellowship with the Lord, the Lord could now speak to him again. The word of the Lord came unto him. Number five, reassignment. Reassignment. Number one, realization. Number two, remorse and regret. Number three, repentance. Number four, restoration. Number five, reassignment. He regained the privilege that he lost, the privilege to minister the word of the Lord. In these two verses in, on the topic, the recommissioning of a repentant preacher, we're going to look at three things. Number one, repentance and restoration of an obstinate minister. Repentance and restoration of an obstinate minister. Number two, recommissioning with the renewal of our mandate. Recommissioning with the renewal of our mandate. Number three, reiteration and reaffirmation of the original message. Reiteration and reaffirmation of the original message. Let's look at number one. It's repentance and restoration of an obstinate minister. In Jonah chapter 3 verse 1 and verse 2. The word of the Lord came unto Jonah the second time saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching, the word, the message that I bid thee. He had repented before this time. When Jonah rebelled against God's will, he ceased to be a prophet of God. Because you cannot be an ambassador and a rebel at the same time. The moment he became a rebel in his heart, a rebel in his thought, a rebel in his action, he ceased to be the ambassador, the representative, the prophet of the Lord. That's why he was silent. There was no message anymore. There was no communication anymore. The link between him and heaven was caught. And then he, was, he went down into the deep. And I studied with you earlier how he went down and down and down. Until he cried and he would look into the holy temple again. He could not be an ambassador, a representative of the Lord while he was a rebel. But then he repented. And with repentance came forgiveness. And God's grace restored him. And God's grace restored him in two ways. Number one, he was restored personally. Number two, he was restored officially. 
there was personal restoration to the grace of God. There was also an official restoration to the ministry. Those two things are very important. When a Christian worker backslides and goes into sin, number one, there will be a restoration to personal relationship. And then, number two, maybe it will be after even a time, there will be an official restoration to the work of the Lord. Please understand, the restoration of the first into personal relationship did not necessarily include the restoration of the second, the official restoration into ministry. But thank God, because of his grace, uh, for this man, Jonah, that the restoration included both personal and official. God was so gracious to Jonah that he called him the second time. And he was to begin again the point at the point where he had left off. What was he to do? He was to preach. He was to witness. He was to win souls unto the Lord. He was to go to Nineveh and he was to do the very thing he had abandoned, what he should have done. Let me emphasize the point I just made to you now. Two things. Number one, sonship. Number two, service. Sonship comes before service. If somebody had backslidden, like Jonah, left the work of the Lord and had sinned and had rebelled against the Lord, there is service, there is sonship. Before you can come to the service, there must be sonship and evidence that there is a personal restoration before official restoration. Or uh, put it this other way, there is membership, there is ministry. He must first of all be a member of the family of God before he will be a minister over the flock of God. Which means then, there is that personal thing that is restored into membership. And then, as we see that he's a full member of the church of the living God, there is not the privilege to minister in the fold, in the flock of God. Put it another way, there's a privilege of being a sheep. There's a privilege of being a shepherd over the flock of the Lord. And being a sheep over the fold, over the flock, must proceed, must come before being a shepherd over the fold. Isn't that exactly what the Lord told uh, this uh, Peter in Luke chapter 22? Luke chapter 22, reading there from verse 31. Luke 22, verse 31. In verse 31, here Jesus said, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You will backslide, Peter. Although Peter did not realize that that will come to pass, eventually it came to pass. But Jesus said, when you are converted, there will be a restoration to sonship. There will be a restoration to become a member of the family of God again. There will be a restoration to be the sheep of the fold. Only after that, you will strengthen the brethren. You will come into service. You will be a minister over the flock. And you will be a shepherd over the fold of the Lord. I will see how that uh, came to pass in his life in John chapter 21. John chapter 21, reading from verse 15. John 21 verse 15 so when they had died jesus said unto simon unto peter a simon son of jonas lovest thou me more than these and he said unto him ye lord i love thee the lord must first find out are you really converted now the original love is it there now the rebellion and the rejection and the backsliding is that off now do you now love me can i have a proof from you of sonship before i tell you about the service can i have a proof from you of the membership in the fold in the family before i can tell you of the ministry that i'm going to give you now can i have a proof from you that you are one of my sheep and now you will love me and hear my voice and follow me before i can tell you how you will be a shepherd always if somebody has backsliding always if somebody had uh, forsaken abandoned the way of the lord the word of the lord the will of the lord we must make sure that he comes into sonship he comes into being a member he comes into being a person that is a sheep of the lord before we talk about service before we talk about ministry and before we talk about is uh, being a shepherd over the flock of the lord when he answered yes lord you know that i love you he said feed my lambs he repeated it in verse 16 do you love me yes i do in verse 17 do you love me yes i do only then did he give him the ministry once again so let's always remember that i come now to point number two the recommissioning 
with the renewal of our mandate. Our mandate uh, means the commission. It means uh, the compelling work of God duty that the Lord has laid upon us. What's that mandate? What was that mandate for Jonah? Look at it in verse 2. Arise. Go unto Nineveh, that great city. Preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. He was recommissioned. Uh, you, you, I want you to now concentrate on just the first part of verse 2. Arise. Go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach. Go and preach. He was to arise, and he was to go, and he was to preach. The mandate had not changed. Jonah's resentment, Jonah's reservation, Jonah's rebellion did not change God's concern for the Ninevites. Did not change God's compassion for Nineveh. And God said Nineveh was a great city. A great city in three ways. Number one, great in size. As he walked through, as he walked through Nineveh, he realized this city is great in size. It's a great city. Number two, great in sins. Because their sins became so great and it came, it came to the presence of the Lord. Number three, great with souls. And uh, that's why God said, I abandoned Nineveh, overlooked Nineveh, great in size, great in sins, great with souls. Uh, then God said, I'm still concerned for them and my compassion is still towards them. Arise therefore and go and preach the word that I gave unto you before. I told you that our reaction, our resentment, our reservation, our rebellion, our retreating, our going back will not affect the mandate. The mandate remains the same. He said go and he's still saying go. Pick up that word and understand at once when you want the salvation of the Lord, you are invited come. But the moment you come into the fold, you are sent again go. There is a word to preach. And before Jesus left, here is what he told his own disciples. Matthew chapter, chapter 28 verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That word has not been withdrawn. Go. And it means get up Go where the sinners are and preach the word unto them. In Mark chapter 16, verse 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That missionary mandate, evangelistic mandate, had not been recalled, had not been cancelled, were still to go. And he's still telling the whole church to take the whole world to the whole world. He's still telling us that this word is what will save the world. There is no other avenue of salvation. It is through the foolishness of preaching that the world will be saved. Therefore, he tells the individual Christian and he tells the whole church, go. He tells us in Matthew, go. It tells us in Mark, go. It tells us in Luke, in Luke chapter 9, in chapter 9 verse 60, and Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. If we're going to be obedient to that uh, commission and mandate, and we're going to preach the way he wants us to preach, then there are some things we have to leave behind, and we have to allow the dead to bury their dead, and then we arise, we have a greater commission, a greater responsibility, and a greater duty we go and preach the word we do it in the city we do it in the village we do it in our nation we do it in nations beyond our nation and i said whatever the circumstances around us whatever the resentment or whatever the reservation or whatever might have happened to us as jonah as peter as other people when we come back to the lord the mandate is still waiting the commission is still waiting and he's still saying that you have lost time and then you have gone away in rebellion that just doesn't change the mandate arise go and preach then in acts of the apostles chapter 5 acts of the apostles chapter 5 reading from verse 17 then the high priest rose up and all that were with him which is a sect of the sadducees and were filled with indignation they laid hands they laid their hands on the apostles and they put them in the common prison but the angel of the lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said go stand speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life you see that yes they suffered persecution was there when god opened the doors of the prison there was still one thing he emphasized unto them through that angel he said go stand speak in the temple uh, to the people all the words of this life would you realize then 
that that is the mandate still on the church is the renewal of our mandate it doesn't change whatever people do wherever people may go and where the people are we preach the watch unto them and paul the apostle understood it was compulsory for him that he will preach that word because that mandate will never change in first corinthians chapter 9 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 16. It says, For though I preach the gospel, I have no, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Yea, woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. In fact, I would say that if you say you have the gospel, you believe the gospel, and you are not going and preaching that gospel, there's a contradiction already. Because the first two letters of the gospel is go. And without going, if the going is suspended from your action, from the believing of the gospel, from the embracing of the gospel, you really do not have and you do not embrace and you do not believe the gospel. To believe the gospel, to accept the gospel is to know that this is good news and it is good news for the people that are perishing over there. If you have the good news, you are not going to be able to spell the good news without the first two letters go. And if you say you have the gospel, you are not going to be able to write down that gospel and and fully understand that gospel without those two words go therefore if you really believe the gospel you are going to take that gospel and you are going to go to the people that are lost for if i do this thing will in verse 17 i have a reward but if against my will i still have to do it a dispensation of the gospel is committed unto me it's like what god was telling ezekiel in ezekiel chapter 3 reading there from verse 17 that there was a necessity laid upon him the hand of the lord was upon him and the Lord, hand of the Lord is upon us. That hand of the Lord is upon you. I said it's upon you. You have a responsibility and it must be done in verse 17, son of man. I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his uh, wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity but his blood will i require at thine hand we have no choice therefore we have been made watchmen and because we are watchmen the mandate is there we are to preach the word the response of a few and the rejection resistance of many will not change the mandate or the commission it still says arise brace up thyself prepare yourself prepare to witness then go get to them before they perish because i know that their wickedness has come up before me the lord said and then he said when you get there i don't just uh, do a uh, trade there marketing there and work there and there's something you have to do there preach that's why we're in this world preach it's not to go to school preach it's not to get progress in life preach it's not to raise up children raise up a big family preach it's not to make money we are left here for one purpose and it is to preach the word the urgent message that will save the sinners i come to point number three the reiteration and reaffirmation of the original message the reiteration and reaffirmation of the original message here is uh, where we now need to be very very careful because you know what suffering changes people adverse circumstances change people tough difficult audiences will often change preachers and will change the emphasis of the preacher will change the message of the preacher you pass the preacher through fire and pass the preacher through difficult times and what you'll find when you see him at the end of the tunnel the other end of the tunnel look at his message before he went into the tunnel into that fairy furnace of affliction of misunderstanding here is what he was preaching by the time he passes through the persecution and the suffering and all the exposure and it comes to this other side of the tunnel listen to his message his message has changed because you know circumstances of life they have a way of softening a man of a changing a man or changing the emphasis of that man but you know what god said unto this man after he had passed through the sea and passed through the belly of the whale after he had passed through the, uh, the flood and the flame the lord said in jonah chapter 3 verse 2 arise go unto nineveh that great city preach unto it oh lord what am i going to preach exactly the preaching that i bid thee before the problem came 
And that's a great lesson for us. That whatever you go through in your place of work, whatever you go through as a result of preaching the gospel before, it will not change the mandate. Jonah was not allowed to change the mandate. Whatever our position and whatever our circumstances, it is only the word of the Lord which shall be proclaimed and preached forcefully. The word of the Lord is the sword of the spirit. And it is that that pierces the soul of the sinner. And kills the sins in the heart of that sinner. And that sword, that word, must not be blunt. The gospel then must not be altered. And it must not be changed to suit the desires of men. With faithfulness and persistence. And we must preach the word to save sinners and to sanctify the church. Uh, look at jo uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, we're looking at verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 7, and the Lord was talking to Jeremiah. And he told him, I've, I've given you a commission from before you were born. This was determined upon you. In verse 7 it says, And the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I be, I shall send thee. And whatsoever, uh, whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Jonah, you're going to get to Nineveh. And you are going to tell them exactly the preaching I bid you before. You have suffered already. Maybe you are thinking if I preach nothing and I tell those wicked people in Nineveh in 40 days, Nineveh will be destroyed. I can guess what they are going to do. Whatever you guess, whatever you suppose, whatever you think, whatever you fear might come. Preach the preaching that I bid thee. We have no right to change the mandate. I want you to look at that same Jeremiah chapter 1 in verse 17. Verse 17 says, Thou therefore gather up thy loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command thee. You see what the Lord was saying? He was saying, I be, I've bidding you to do something. I've given you a commission, a mandate. And I've given you the message you are going to preach. You can't change it. You can't adulterate it. You can't alter it. You can't adapt it. You can't look at your circumstances and look at yourself and say, be careful now. Very careful now. Because if you preach it exactly as the Lord has given you, you're going to go through something in Nineveh. Jonah, already you passed through something. And in isolation, in affliction, you know what you went through. That same message I gave you unto Nineveh. Preach it. Look around you. Look around the churches. If there is any message, the ministers of God in all the churches and denominations and fellowships, new and old, if there is anything they need to hear today, it is that puny man, poor man, and wretched man has no right to change the word of the Almighty. Because that's what they are doing today. Those who preach repentance before, they are not preaching repentance again. Those who preach restitution before, they are not preaching restitution again. Those who preach against the world, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. They are not preaching it again. Those who preach sanctification, entire sanctification, the God of peace, sanctify you holy, and your spirit, your soul, your body, be preserved blameless, until the coming of the Lord. They are not preaching it again. Those who preach holiness before. Follow peace with all men. And holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. They are not preaching that holiness again. Those who preach that there will be the rapture before the tribulation. Those who preach here before. As they look at all the circumstances in the world. And they say are we not wrong? Look at the circumstances in the communist world. Look at the circumstances over there. Isn't that the tribulation already? They are now changing it a little bit. And they are saying maybe it will be the rapture in the middle of the tribulation the Lord is saying whatever you see in the sky whatever you see on the land whatever you see on the sea earthquake or whatever there is no changing of the message the doctrine remains the same that's why maybe the other churches might be wondering about us and they might be wondering how is it Modern modernism has come civilization has come a lot of technology and invest investing has come inventing of things have come how is it that this deeper life the same thing they preach in the days when there was no radio when there was no television when there was no modernization and when there was no civilization that same message they're still preaching then they call the answer is simple we have no right to change the mandate the word of the living god because he told jonah preach that same thing that i gave you before that same jeremiah jeremiah look at it chapter 1 verse 17 therefore Thou get up thyself, 
thy loins and arise speak unto them all that i command thee be not dismayed at their faces lest i condemn i confound thee before them and so you will see what the lord is saying exactly the same thing he said to ezekiel he told ezekiel the same thing that ezekiel was to proclaim and preach the same message the same word he had given unto them unto him in ezekiel chapter 2 ezekiel chapter 2 reading there in verse 7 and thou shall speak my words unto them not your words don't adapt it don't change it don't uh, dilute don't dilute it don't diminish anything from it give it to them whole as it is with everything that is there thou shalt speak my words unto them whether they will hear or whether they will forbear they are for their most uh, rebellious and uh, when you look at uh, Nineveh and uh, that's what Jonah was afraid of he thought that Nineveh will not hear the undiluted word of God the prophecy that the Lord had given him and he must have been thinking if you are going to get to Nineveh and have a successful ministry those hardened people those drunkards those murderers if you preach a negative message in 40 days never shall be destroyed you're not going to have a, con a, a congregation but god said don't change it just say what i told you to say and preach the word as i've given you the word to preach and leave the result in my hand that's exactly what the lord is telling us we're not looking for crowd why do you need a crowd crowd on earth no crowd in heaven many people on earth in your church and very few when you get to heaven you don't want that you want to preach the word in the power of the spirit of god and leave the resource in the hand of the lord you don't want to change anything because human nature will not be converted by this kind of watery diluted kind of message that will not pierce the soul that will not go deep into the heart of men what we need therefore is the original mandate original message the word of the lord to give unto the people jesus christ has finalized it for us look at it in matthew chapter 28 Matthew chapter 28, reading there in verse 20, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always unto the end of the world. It's very clear then that until the end of the world, until the Lord will come, we have no right to change the message. It is teaching them to observe all things whatsoever the Lord has commanded. Actually, he just came back from Calvary, where he died for our sins. And then he told the people, the gospel has been accomplished at Calvary. And because it has been accomplished at Calvary, I give it now into your hand. You've seen me. I died for the sins of the world. I was buried. And then I rose again for the justification of humanity, of anyone that will believe. I give you that gospel then of the death of Christ, of the burial of Christ, of the resurrection of Christ. And you go into the world and preach that same thing as you preach. And they believe you baptize them in the name of the Father and of the son and of the holy ghost then they are integrated with the church as they're integrated with the church day after day and week after week you'll be teaching them all things that i commanded you tell them at calvary the greatest problem of human sin and degradation was solved tell them at calvary all human sorrows hide in my wounds tell them at calvary the wrath of the law has been removed tell them at calvary our condemnation is taken away our death penalty death sentence has been revoked tell them at calvary the door of heaven is open tell them at calvary for whosoever believes the door of hell is closed tell them at calvary the bitterness of life is sweeting tell them at Calvary, the voice of God still re-echoes today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's the gospel. And as you go, tell them that preach that gospel tell them without jesus the future is an awful catastrophe go and tell them exactly what i've told you that's our commission and that should be our commitment we will do it i said we will do it there's no other thing to do any other thing you're doing whatever success you have if you are not preaching the gospel when you get over there you'll be poor you will cry but whatever you don't have on earth you preach the gospel when we get over there you'll be richer than solomon let's rise up and pray will you go and tell them a calvary has solved the problem of human sin human degradation Will you go and tell them 
at Calvary, the mercy of God is revealed. Will you go and tell them? At Calvary, the bitterness of life has been switching. Will you go and tell them? At Calvary, the judgment hanging on them has been removed. You will you go and tell them? So that they will not perish. Will you go and tell them? That at Calvary, the voice of God is still re-echoing today. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. It's urgent, it's urgent, it's urgent.